Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the World Championships. And this, in comes the team of foreigners. This is going to be sick. We got the Korean team coming here right now. Can the international scene beat the Koreans? I don't know. I want to say yes as a non Korean. It's, you know, it's a fascinating thing, Artosis. The Koreans, uh, or in general, uh, you never get one country that's better at one thing and then the rest of the entire world but today we're gonna find out if that's the case we got the five best koreans the five best non-koreans hands down it's gonna be insane yeah uh you know yesterday it was a pretty close match overall uh it was it did end up three to two in korea's favor we'll see maybe the borders can uh do a little bit better today if they do end up winning uh this this gstl style match then we'll go on to an ace match, which will just be a best of three. Yeah, I, I gotta say, we could not have better non-Koreans down here. Uh, yeah, this is... Scarlett, Stefano, Portix, everybody. Yeah, that's right, and just so you guys know, uh, unfortunately, someone stole Nanawa's gear. He's left-handed. It's, like, impossible to replace on short notice. Yep. So Vortex has to play in his stead. Yeah, uh, he has a, a left-handed keyboard or... Like, a left-handed left mouse, mouse, a special you, one. So, I mean, can't replace that, couldn't find the time, but we got Vortex here. Uh, I think it's gonna be an epic series, Artosis. This is day three now of casting here in Las Vegas. It has been great. You guys, as an audience, kick ass. We love you guys. Please bring us back to Las Vegas. Yes. I would love to come back. It's been such a fun trip so far, Tasteless. It has. Yeah. Lots of gambling, lots of partying, lots of casting. It's been an amazing experience down here. Um, okay, so your predictions going into this? Uh, you know, it's, it's a tough road, but we have some great players on the foreigner team. And, you know, it's sad to lose Nanwan, but Vortex has been killing it lately. So uh, hopefully he can fill in pretty well. Yeah, you know, I, I got to agree with you. I was inspired when I saw Vortex playing uh, in IEM at Gamescom uh, in Germany. Uh, so, so phenomenal. Yeah. But, you know, this format is a little bit different than what we've done uh, if you're watching yesterday. Today, uh, the winner stays. Yeah, and that could be a problem. Uh, but let's talk about yesterday's results real quick and see that we had Seed take out Luce Front, then Scarlet beat DRG in a really long ZBZ, a great game indeed. Squirtle versus Nurcio, very interesting carrier play that barely ended up working. And then we had Life against Nanoa. That was back and forth. We all thought Nanoa would take it. And then, of course, Stefano beat down MC. Yeah. Um, and, of course, yesterday, the uh, GSL CODES Finals. You know, I was so happy it went to that final game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, the players, or the two players there, played so well. A beautiful ZBZ final. Uh, it was fantastic. You guys missed it. I don't know what you were doing, but it wasn't up, as fun. Drop the ball. Yeah. But uh, here today, we're going to start out with Lucifron, our only Terran in this whole thing, uh, going up against Life. And uh, that's going to be kind of hard because Life is the former GSL champion just from well, a season ago. He's, I mean, Life is on fire. Yeah. Life yeah. is playing so well. Super young guy. Uh, making him super deadly, super ambitious. We're gonna see, uh, you know, how long he can last here today. But of course, first of all, our foreign lineup, Lucifron, came out of nowhere in Warcraft 3, dominating. Yeah, a really, really great player. And, you know, he's had great results so far in StarCraft 2. Then, of course, we have Nurcio, and definitely one of the best Zergs outside of Korea. He has a lot of big tournament wins. And then, of course, Nanoa, a couple GSL round of eights in a row recently, as it's gotten so hard. Uh, really a top-end Protoss. Unfortunately, he won't be playing Vortex well in his stead today. And Stefano, legend. I feel like this guy is Neo Elki. Yeah. You guys familiar with Elki from StarCraft 1? 
Some of you guys are, okay. He's probably in the casino playing poker somewhere, Jason. Yeah, he's actually a pro poker player now. But Elky, amazing French Starcraft uh, yep. one, Taryn. And then we now have... Here in, uh, you know, we got a Starcraft one, French, Zorja, same guy. And then, of course, we have Scarlet as well, which uh, she's a badass, the Canadian champion, the North American champion, and uh, beat DRG, so that's, that's pretty hardcore. But they're up against these guys. We've got the Startail coach leading Light Seed, MC, DRG, and Squirtle. Yeah. Uh, that is a scary lineup taken right out of the GSL rankings. Now, of course, Life, he was the champion last season, a Royal Rotor. So impressed with his play. Everyone in the world is really. Yeah. Uh, Seed, I think easily one of the smartest players out there. Super talented guy. Uh, great uh, at figuring out the best builds to use. I'm looking forward to his play. And then MC, the boss toss. What, what do you even have to say about this guy? He's won the most money, he's won the most tournaments, and he's a badass. He is. DRG, best mid-game in StarCraft 2 easily. He is a top end Zerg, and you know, his, his teammate won last night in the GSL Finals. And of course, we have Squirtle, someone who's been pushing Protoss forward since way back, for years now. He's been one of the best. Yeah, Squirtle, the Pokemon Protoss, he is solid, best guy devising build orders out there. But today, the challenge, can Korea beat the five best non-Koreans? Korea, okay, there's a lot of people there, but compared to the rest of the world, uh, they're definitely outnumbered. Is Korea really that good? That's what we're going to find out today. Yeah, we will find that out, Tasis, or maybe, you know, the foreigners, they have gotten so good themselves. They could. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is, it is that best of one format, too, so there is some variation in it. I think they have a chance. I think they do. Uh, you know, remember, guys, the winner stays. So let's say, okay, we got Lucifron here on screen. Let's say Lucifron wins. He keeps going. Lucifron could win the next, I don't know, four games? Yeah. Could and be. then it's up to that final Korean to try to pull it off. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Lucifron is a really good uh, TVZ player. His brother, one of the best Zergs outside of Korea. And so he has a lot of practice at it. And uh, I mean, this, is, is, this could be a good match because it's Antigua Shipyard. This is really the map you want to use Lucifron on. Uh, it's the most Terran map in the pool. Yeah, I 100% agree with you on that one. Antigua, definitely the map you want to use. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got Lucifron, great Terran map. Could be a good shot for Lucifron going into this. Remember, um, there is so much uh, strategy in who do you send out? Yeah. You know? Oh, uh, absolutely. It, it, one guy loses, okay, how do we take him out? It's 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 kind of like baseball in the sense, okay, we're going to throw a certain number of balls, the guy's um, the joint his arm is going to get tired, clear yeah. him out. How do we snipe each player? Yeah, and it can be tough, especially when you're playing against a total package player like life. For instance, if Lucifron loses here, who do you put against Life? That's that's a really hard question. And, uh, you know, everyone else on the team is Zerg, so I guess that makes it a little bit easier. It does. Um, you know, Zerg right now, fairly strong. Uh, so, Greg K, that's good. We got a lot of Zergs here for the foreign team, though. But at the same time, it's easier to snipe a team that is all one race. Yeah, you I know? mean... Uh, you have to really look at the play style of each player once you have just so many that are and, the same race. Maps. Yeah, the, who's comfortable on what map and uh, what what type of game do they like to play. So we'll see how they fare at that, Tasteless. I think we're getting ready. Yep, we're almost there. Uh, Lucifron and Light. Now, remember, there's a possibility one player could just all kill the entire team. It, it could happen. It could happen. I think that's why Life is such a good choice here. He's just so well-rounded and so strong recently. I feel like Life has a good chance to maybe get a couple kills here. And, you know, game one in a team match like this, it really sets the tempo. Yeah. It really does. And, uh, all right, so Antigua Shipyard, Lucifron against Life. It is Antigua Shipyard. This is a good map for TBZ. It Can is. Can Lucifron take out Life? Fourth base. For the Zerg, hard to secure. Fourth base for the Terran, hard to secure, but Zerg always wants to be up a base, so we're gonna see if this goes to late game here. And I'm guessing that's gonna be the strategy here for Lucifron going to this. We are here in Las Vegas. 
And we're about to go into this game. Lucifer brought against Light. Make some noise. Let's go. GSL World Championship. Right. As we see, the game is just about loaded. Get right in here. Antigua, great map. Um, one of our older maps here at Golem TV. Um, and we're going to go ahead and intro these players. All right. Over here in the bottom left, our only Terran and our only non Zerg on the Thorner team. Guys, give it up for Lucifron. <laughs> And over here, in the top right, he is a former GSL champion, a Royal Rotor, an MLG champion. Give it up for... Star Tail Luck. I'm not... You know, I always laugh when you scrub the intro is tasteless, but <laughs> it's hard. You're doing just fine, Artosis. So, uh... Going into this, a lot of pressure uh, for the Koreans, in fact, not the non-Koreans, okay? If the Koreans lose, that says a lot about the international scene. The, we expect the Koreans to win this. Yes, yes. And if the foreigners could win this and bring it to that ace match, that would be great because, you know, who do you choose for that ace match? Probably just a player that's playing the best today. Uh, but you have, like, some players that absolutely can take a best of three off of people on the Korean team. We're going to have a hatchery going down here now. They are in cross spots. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty normal for Antigua. Yep. Only the latter version doesn't allow that. Uh, everything else forces it because otherwise it becomes imbalanced. Absolutely. you got to have that right distance from your opponent. That's why we've seen StarCraft 2 maps uh, get bigger and bigger with each uh, new addition. Mm -hmm. The farther the distance, the more... Uh, leeway the Zerg has, yeah. but if it gets too small, it's impossible to expand. That's right, and if it gets too big, it's impossible to attack. Sure. So, have to be careful and find that balance. Still working on that in StarCraft 2. So, we're going to have a fast expanding Terran here. A uh, little gutsy by Lucifron going for the command center on low ground, not on high ground. Yeah, he oftentimes does do it on low ground. He has really excellent micro so you know i don't think it's going to be too much of an issue if it was command center first or something it's a little bit more dangerous uh but with that racks first he should be fine so uh artosis question time yes because we're gonna let these guys build up uh, their tech here you're lucifron what do you do do you go mech you go bio what well I'm Lucifron, so I do what Lucifron does, which is go for Hellions and Banshee, and maybe Cloak, maybe not, but a lot of great harassment. He goes mech a lot against Zerg, but not really on this map, so just into normal play with a really strong timing push. We're going to see if he does just that. Life, same situation, what do you do? Uh, well, that's, that's harder to predict, really, because Life plays... A little bit different than other players, because he plays the macro game, but he also mixes in a lot of aggression. You know, he gains control of the map, he, he mixes up, throws a lot of zerglings at you. So, I feel like life, he just, he does his thing, he feels out what Lucifron's doing, and tries to kill him. Yeah, we're going to see in just a little bit. I think you got a good call there, though, with life. Could definitely be the case. Um, so, on this map, and actually, let me, actually, let me, Back, back pedal here for a second. Um, Terran's always going to get Hellions in this map uh, to push back the creep. Now, on this map, is creep the most important thing for Zerg? Actually, no. Having the high ground in the middle is. Terran and Zerg included. Yeah, you know, if Terran actually gets up there with their siege tank army, it is so hard to break. You know, yeah, sure, you can go and flank and whatnot, but with the watchtower seeing where you're coming from, with that high ground advantage, uh, it gets really ridiculous. And they cut the map up, so you can't even go over and save other bases. So, 
Uh, that is going to be a really important part of this game. And if Lucifer can gain that positioning, uh, he's going to be on his road to victory. So, Hellions on the way. We're going to see Banshees with the Hellions. Uh, this, I think it's got common, what, like seven or eight months ago? Yeah, it started popping up. And you know? then, you know, it's just, it's grown in popularity. And I got to tell you, Lucifer is. Uh, someone that does it basically every time. Like, he just yeah. always, always, always goes for this strategy. Well, I feel like Lucifer's his play style, he's not one of these guys that we're saying, oh my god, he's so unpredictable. Mm -hmm. What is he going to do? Which, like, like MVP, for instance. Yeah. He's just very good at doing what he does, you know, this Lucifron standard orthodox textbook style. Yeah, his TBZ is pretty well mapped out. You know, it's, it's mech or bio, but it generally opens with this, so... Uh, if Life did his homework on Lucifron, I'm not sure whether or not he did, but if he did, he's going to know that. And that can really help him out. Well, you know, one edge. Oh, oh, oh. Got a surround, maybe. And... and... Ooh, he actually ends up killing two already. Has a lot of lings left here. Can he get a surround on these two Hellions? Getting closer, uh, closer, closer. Oh, almost getting that one. Nice move by Lucifron actually getting out of here. And he escapes. Wow, those Hellions. You know, they are slippery. Life has got easily the best Zerglings in Starcraft 2. Yeah, he's, he's so good. This is really characteristic of him, too. Yeah. You know, he's. This is kind of what he does. He's like, oh, you're going for that? Okay. And then he makes a bunch of Zerglings and kills your Hellions. He's, he doesn't like you having map control. You know, he reminds me a lot of uh, Jadon. Yeah. Starcraft 1, Jadon. That's true. Yeah. Really he's very does. decisive, very good at micro, very good at macro. Uh, just hard to kill. So, double Evo here, uh, which says a lot because that means life wants to go to the late game. Now, in late game on this map, very possible to not uh, win with Zerg. I mean, it's hard to get that extra base, but life clearly has a plan. He's very confident going into this. All right, well, this harassment is starting tasteless heavily, too. And, uh, you know, this is... He's not making any more Banshees, so this is just a little poke by Lucifron. Sometimes he goes for a lot more. This time, kind of sitting back on it. And in fact, that's, this is really interesting, the Spire going up for life. So, you know, that's something that's really good if they make a lot of Banshees. If they don't, you might not do as much damage. You know, the beauty of Hellion Banshee is that it maintains ambiguity in the tech for the Terran in mm -hmm. mid-game, late-game. That's true. You can go bio or mech off this. Yeah. But you know, on this map, we don't see that much mech, really. It's just so good for Marine Tank. And in fact, with this uh, Overseer Scout, he's going to see exactly what's going on. Their command center are already up. The barracks already up and upgrading. And that's not going to really surprise Light. So, Banshee and Hellion coming up here now. Uh, and we might have a flank here. It, will it catch? Uh, oh, uh, yes. Wow, man, really well done. Look at that. Life cleans up everything. And you know, now he has that total map control. And he's up already by 30 supply. You know, the premise around Hellion Banshee is that you can do damage without losing stuff. Yeah. So this is really bad for Lucifron. Yeah, it's definitely not how he wanted to open. And look at this as well. Lucifron going to kill off this Overlord. Looks like he will get it, but... You know, it's going to take a long time for that creep to actually recede. Yeah, it really will. Muna's out now, uh, and Lucifron seems to be somewhat prepared. Mm -hmm. Well, he does have, you know, that one missile turret we're looking at right now. Yep. His Marines can get in there pretty darn quickly with Medivacs out as well. You know, he could he beat out Stimps here, though. Yeah, he definitely could. Sure. Maybe pick some things off. Look at that placement. What? <laughs> That's pretty efficient. <laughs> That's some hack range right there. I know, Tasis. right? Not um, for sure that reactor. No, I know, down. right? I've like, seen the same dude, thing. Did you like, see him moving him? He's like, this can't be hitting me. <laughs> so, Muna's now going to drive back the uh, command center. And, uh, you Ooh. know. Yeah, I like uh, what we just saw there. Those Zerglings killing that. Talk that means about, he wants to take his fourth talk, there. Yeah, talk about preempting uh, late game here. Yeah. And he's already taken the fourth before Terran has planted his third. Yeah, I mean, he's he's getting ready for it, absolutely. And that this is so awesome to see him actually go for this. We never see Zergs actually go and try to take a fourth like this so early and kill those rocks. But with the Mutas, he should be able to keep loose front of his base long enough to get that fourth actually mining. Okay, so the Mutas now going to come in again. I guess life is not going to go for a timing. I thought he no. was. Most Zergs do. 
In this case, he's not. No. And, uh, in fact, looks like he's going to start ripping down the rocks, but that's just something so that he can run in later on. Uh, and actually, the Muta's taking down that hack missile turret and going after the eBay. And a lot of SCVs going down, it looks like, Tasteless. This is actually some good harassment right now. Nice save, though. Hetty lost that eBay. That's huge. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. But Link's Zerling's doing it now. going into that third base and won't end up doing all that much. They actually did a lot of damage to that command center. Well, though. it was hit by the Mutas before. Ah, yeah, yeah. So he thought, okay, maybe he won't react in time. He won't let I can just snipe it. Sure. Not the case, though. If you happen to have like five SCVs queued up, sometimes it takes a while to actually sure. cancel that. Yeah. All right, so, so we actually have a tech switch right now for life. Uh, he's going right into his Infestor tech, getting that bro as well. I love this. Look at this. Throwing down spine crawlers so that drops aren't going to be as effective against that base. Life's playing this map really, really well. He really is. Um, Lucifron, though, his defense is solid. We're really waiting for that one moment when the Terran is going to push out. Yeah. And, you know, Lucifron looks like he could be ready just about now because that 2 2 is finishing up. Also, he's adding two more factories. And by adding two more factories, it's kind of like a TSL bolt style. Uh, and you're just going to have a lot of sea changes. It's going to be very powerful until Broodlords. The Mutas have been driven out now. Um, we're going to see Greater Spire Tech soon. The uh, Hive about like one third of the way done over here. Uh, but still, look at the supplies. Zerg maxed out. Now you want to pull Larva uh, mm -hmm. and get as much up as you possibly can. And uh, just try to hammer the Terran away as he tries to forth. Yeah. Look at this now. 27 Banelings on the way. He has these investors at pretty darn high energy. We might see an attack from him just because he is maxed out. And he is starting to bank a lot of resources. Looks like uh, we're going to have a little bit of a drop. That usually indicates the push is going to start. When you drop, yeah, you're trying to do damage. But as you can see, you're making the army move. Yeah. And they may be in a bad position when you push out. Exactly. Well, this drop, there's already spine crawlers up here, so it probably won't do too much damage, but it's going to do exactly what you were saying, Taste. It's going to make him go out of position a little bit. And that allows Lucifer to push, and that's exactly what he's doing right now. So, this drop, take it out. Whoa! Whoa. That is what we call good bungles. As you can see here, Terran trying to push up as much as he can. Um, can he get the high ground? I don't know. Life did this very well. He did not take the center base and said, oh, hold that thought. And we got the attack coming up here. Lots of links, lots of investors, lots of bane links. Can he hold on? Wow, look at this. So many units rolling in and the Marines being fungal. Bane links going to them. The mute is going to clean up these siege shanks. A wonderful engagement here for life. Really nicely done. Supply. 108 to 176. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, I mean, life just took such a gigantic lead there. Look at the creep spread on the mini-map. I mean, he's getting all these upgrades. His Greater Spire is almost done. He's even getting drops. He has a fifth base making on Antigua. Who thought we'd ever say that? Uh, life is in just a great spot here. It's going to be really hard for Lucifron to come back. All right. Lings, Infestors, Mutas gathered up here. I don't think life can lose. Honestly, it's it's gonna be I, it's gonna be hard for Loose Front to do it for sure, especially since I mean he's making tanks really quickly, which is gonna help in the push. But it, the Greater Spire just finished, so the tanks aren't gonna be as useful against the Broodlords. It, whenever you're against a good Zerg, you should feel like you can't leave your base. You can't go on the map. Won't happen. Won't work. Uh, that's exactly what we see here now. Loose Front can't get even, but, but we'll see it again here. But he can't get out of his base for more than a minute or two here without Zerg smashing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right now life is just kind of slowing him down while his Broodlords are making. Doesn't care about all these units all that much. It's really about the Broodlords popping out. Yeah. Because we have, let's see, zero Vikings right now. All his anti-air is just in Marines. And the Broodlords moving up. Oh, look at this. A nice run forward by the Marines, but they do get fungled down and will be cleaned up. All right, the Lynx now closing in. Not in siege mode. Could be bad. And, oh wow, what? That was a really nice scan there to actually yeah. be able to target down some of those investors. Very good move by Lucifron, buying a lot of time here. In fact, his supply catching up quite a bit, but we do have life continuing to push forward. 
Ooh, got to be careful though. You have to have support here. And look at that scan once again. Great play by Lucifron. All right, but the Mutas are taking damage for the Brood Lords now, driving him back. And uh, again, I just don't know how on earth Lucifron gets out of his base. Well, I tell when you, is that, he gonna hit another, when it's going to be hard, man. And it, even if he does break out of his base, he has a lot of Zerg to kill. There's just bases all over the map. And in fact, these Vikings being taken out. Oh, losing those Vikings, that may be the death blow, Taste. There's just so little damage output on these Broodlords. And now, Life is actually pushing towards. Uh, was, oh, GG. GG. I was going to say, Life is now pushing towards Lucifer's uh, expansion. Could be bad. He might close in on him. But there you go, GG. Yeah, you know. Well done, my life. That Lucifron, uh, overall, he played pretty well in the mid and late game. But losing his early Hellions and Banshee, not really getting anything done, not gaining any real map control, that was an issue. And life just destroyed him because of it. Okay, now who do you bring out? All right, well, what do you do? We have a lot of Zerg players. You have to bring out someone that is really deadly ZBZ. Uh, do I you said, want to use Stefano yet? I, I was going to say Stefano, but... I, I, I think I disagree with Stefano right really? now. Scarlet showed fantastic ZBZ yesterday. Maybe throw her out on Metropolis. Uh, that I feel like that could be a good choice since she beat DRG. I mean, that's that's really strong. Uh, also, I feel like Vortex is one of the best ZBZers I've ever seen. So oh, you know what? Actually, Vortex, I feel like Vortex would, be would be a really either. good choice, too. Yeah. Um, but it's hard because... Whoever you throw out, the Koreans are going to try to snipe. Yeah, no, that's it's true. But you know, you have only Zergs to work with at this point. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling Scarlet or Vortex. I think it's a tough call. Um, all right, so the tempo has now been set. Koreans uh, right now in the lead, not massively, but they're big. I don't know, I don't know where we go from here, but. Well, Honestly, we go to perhaps a lot of ZVZs. Perhaps. <laughs> you you may be right, Artosis. The, the Zerg weekend. Um, Can't spell December without a Z, Tasis. <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, I didn't think they were going to put life out first. No, I, you know? I, I didn't really put a lot of thought into who exactly would come out first, but when I saw it was life, I'm like, yeah, that makes actually a lot of sense. Well, you just put somebody who's solid. Mm -hmm. He's been... It's not always about, oh, he's got four GSL championships. No, of course. No, he just won you know, one of the most recent GSLs. He's in good shape. Yeah, it's not just that either. Uh, he's actually, his style fits Antigua pretty well overall. Yeah. He's someone that definitely can play Antigua. All right, so let's see. Who are they going to choose? All ah, right. Scarlet. Going to be Scarlet. This should be a really good game. We saw some fantastic. CVZ from Scarlet yesterday. Scarlet played so well yesterday, but you know, now her going, CVZ is top notch, really. Well, you know, what I loved about Scarlet CVZ was end game still uh, perfect. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you see players, oh man, he's so good, first 10 minutes, mm -hmm. or he's got great timings, or his micro so good. Scarlet went all the way to end game, was ready for the night of swarm, everything. Yeah, and uh, you know what, the map, this is kind of interesting, in Tomb Valley. I wasn't actually expecting that one, uh, but you know what, it, here's here's my thought on in Tomb Valley. Uh, first off, it may just be a map that Scarlet really likes, but I think more importantly, with all Zergs left, you don't want someone choosing in Tomb Valley against your Zerg, so get rid of it in a ZDZ. Yeah, I agree. Um... Against, there's so much strategy here uh, going into this uh, with who you pick, what maps you go on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with that. I think it's I think it's a good choice, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a These sick These signs sign. are awesome. Yeah. Well. You guys are great. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, as you guys can see, 57% here voting for Scarlet right mm -hmm. now. We'll see if um, if she can pull it off. But again, if you go down to 02, it, it's getting worse and worse. Yeah, if you go 02 here with Scarlet, I feel like you have to bring out pro uh, probably Lucifer. I mean, not Lucifer, uh, Vortex. And you don't, I mean, uh, 
Scarlet has to win this tasteless, or it's it's going to be such an uphill battle. If Scarlet loses, who do you pick? Uh, Vortex, I think. Vortex. Mm -hmm. I was going to say Stefano, but yeah. Well, I mean, they're both awesome, obviously. And they're good picks, no matter what. Uh, but I don't know. I, I think Vortex is like Korean ZBZ. So, all right, the countdown has begun, Tasteless. Let's get ready, guys. Scarlet against Life here at GoTV.net. Make some noise. Ah!